Hello and welcome back to Python for GCSE Computer Science. This time we're going to be looking at how to make a 1980s retro Pong game. So before we begin, let me show you what the game actually looks like. I'm in Python and we've written this code in 135 lines. Okay, and that does include some comments. Throughout the video, there will be a lot more comments and a lot more explanation, but I'm just going to run this and show you what the game actually does. So we're going to run module. Okay, so it's going to bring up a pop-up screen with some instructions on what we do. And you can see left and right arrow keys and spacebar to start the game. So I'll press spacebar and it starts off very, very slowly. Okay, and I can move my paddle from, from left to right. Okay, and it counts up the scores. Every time I hit the ball back, it, can, it adds one to the score. Now, once we've hit three of the balls back, the game will start to speed up. Okay, I see it speeded up a little bit there. And every time um, we pass another three, so three, six, nine, twelve, the game will get faster and faster. Okay, so if you want to continue, let's have a look at how we put this game together. So if you have a little look at Python, we're going to import turtle, import random. Okay, we're going to set up the screen. We're going to set up some introductory text. We're going to create the introduction to turtle by basically drawing the elements. Okay, we're going to create a function called start game, and we're going to create a function to move the paddles left and right. We're going to attach the keys, left and right keys, okay, to these paddle controls, and then we're going to create a main, a main game where we move the ball, and we set the ball mathematics, and we check if there's borders, so the ball bounces off the borders of the box. And then if the ball misses the paddle when it reaches the bottom, then the game is over. So let's have a look at this back into the presentation. So we're going to import turtle and import random. These are the only two external libraries we need. Okay, most of the game has been created using turtle. The ball and the paddle are really the only two elements that are drawn on the screen. Okay, so we're going to set up the screen. The screen is going to be, as I say, turtle. So we're going to create a screen object. We're going to set up the title for the window. So I call this single player pong, as you can see up here. We set a size, 600 by 600 is a little square screen. Okay, and the screen background color I've set to black. Okay, and then I've just put a little tracer in here to set that to zero, so I've basically turned the tracer off. So the automatic screen updates to manually control when the screen updates. Okay, we just need to include that in there. So let's have a little look at this. So import turtle, yeah, and pop it in. Then the instruction screen I've just shown you, yeah, this is how we'd do it. We'd, we'd create a variable called intro text, okay? And within that, we've got a multi-line string. I've done this with the um, three quote marks. As you can see here, welcome to single player pong. Yeah, try to bounce the ball off the paddles. And that are the instructions for the game. Press space bar to stop. But the text won't appear on screen because we're not told it to. So in this next few lines, 25 to 31, we're gonna show you how to display basically this text onto the screen. Okay, so I'm back into the presentation. In relation to this text, we've got to create a turtle object to display the introductory text. That's what intro turtle equals turtle.turtle .turtle means. Okay, we're going to set the turtle to white. Okay, so that means the text is going to be white. This is basically the same code here, as you can see, but I've just commented it so it's clear to understand. Okay, um, lift the pen up so it doesn't draw anything on the screen. Hide the turtle icon. We don't want a turtle appearing or an arrow or whatever the turtle is set up as. Okay, and move the turtle to zero, zero, basically the center of the screen. Yeah, go to zero, zero. Then we're going to use the dot right command to take that green text, which you saw on the previous slide, the intro text, and that's what's going to appear align centered. Font is going to be courier, 16 point. Yeah, and it's going to be normal, not bold, normal. Okay, so that basically writes, this line here writes the introductory text in the center of the screen with a specific font and size. That's this thing here. So that, going back into this, those first 31 lines have been written, have been created. We can then move on and we can start working on how the game actually will begin, how the game is played. So by creating a paddle, creating a ball. So let's have a little look at that. Okay, so for this next bit, I'm gonna, as I just said, define the start of the game. I'm gonna create a paddle create a score, and create a pen to write the word score onto the screen. So there's the code, but I'm just going to try and break this down a little bit more for you. So let's do step one. 
we're going to define start game. Okay, a new function define start game. So it's going to clear, first of all, intro turtle clear. It's going to clear the introduction text as soon as we press the space bar. So screen, on key press space. That's going to do what they call unbind the space key. So to make sure it doesn't restart the game again. So step two, we're going to create the paddle. So let's just bring in the screen so we can see what's happening. So creating the paddle, that's this thing down here. Yeah, paddle equals turtle dot turtle creates a turtle object. We're going to set the shape of the paddle to square and we're going to set it to white. But what we're going to do is going to change the shape of the square. So sh um, shape size is basically it's stretched in one, but the length of it is going to be five. OK, so that's how we change the size and shape of this paddle. OK, but we don't want to draw anything. It starts at zero, zero. So we don't want to draw anything up here. We're going to move the pen down yeah, from zero, zero in the middle of the screen here down to minus position minus 280 in the y-axis so remember this screen is 600 by 600 so if we start at zero zero we can move sort of 300 in that direction to the border 300 in this direction to the border so positive x this way negative x this way so positive 300 negative 300 and the same for the y-axis up here we're at positive 300 and down here right at the bottom we're at positive we're at negative 300 Okay, so if the paddle's up here, we've basically moved up 20 pixels. So the paddle sort of sits at the bottom of the screen. Okay, at minus, one, uh, minus 280. Okay, so that's step two. Step three, of course, we've got to draw the ball. Okay, and the ball, yeah, we're using turtle.turtle .turtle again to create the object. But the ball shape is going to be a uh, circle. The ball color is going to be white. The ball, again, we've got to put pen up because we're going to move the ball to position right down to the bottom here, that's where this zero is here, right down to the bottom just to sit just on top of the paddle. Remember the paddle is at 200 minus 280, so the ball is going to sit on top of the paddle at minus, minus 260. That's just going to be a start position. Okay, and then we can change the velocity to a random choice, minus 2 or 2. Okay, and set the ball's y velocity to 2. So we're going to set the velocity, the x, um, the x velocity and the y velocity. Okay, and then we've got to set the score. Score equals zero up here. Okay, so it's going to start on zero. Now step five, we're going to use the pen to basically write this out. Yeah, to write this out here. So pen speed is zero. So it's pen speed is fastest. Pen color is white. Pen up. Yeah, hide the turtle. Pen goes to the top plus 260 yeah in the y-axis zero in the x-axis place the pen to the top center of the screen and then write the variable score okay align it center font courier size 24 normal and this will write in this score up at the top of the screen okay so just to show you this in python we are now at line 68 we've just completed the first 66 lines of code okay so next step, let's have a look at how we're going to control the paddle and move it from left to right. So game controller, I'm defining two functions here, move left function and move right function. Okay, we've got a strange sort of X coordinate thing going on here. So get the current X coordinate of the paddle. Okay, subtract minus, subtract, subtract 30 from the X coordinate to move the paddle left. If the X coordinate is less than minus 280, if the paddle's coordinate is less than minus 280 left edge, set it to minus 280, okay? And set the paddle's X, yeah, update the paddle's X coordinate to the new value. So to basically move from the center, from zero, 280, over to the left. Now, pressing the, um, the right key, okay, it's exactly the same, but we're gonna go in the, um, in the, in sort of the positive direction. Yeah, as you can see here, positive 280, positive 280. Okay, that's how we would do that. Now, of course, we've got to join the keys, the keyboard keys, to these instructions. So if, if that's the case, define move left and define move right. And we've called these here, look. So screen listens, any, any keyboard presses. The screen on key press, move left, left, call the move left function. And when we press right, we're calling the right function. So that's how we're moving the paddle left and right. 
And there it is without all the comments written. So you can just simply copy that if you want to. Okay, again, these values can be changed. It's entirely up to you how you do it. You can change the keys as well. A and D, Z and X or whatever you want to use. So just going back into Python. Yeah, we're now at line 89 and we're into the main body. Okay, the main game loop. Remember, it's 135 lines of code. So we've just got the main game loop to sort out. Okay, and then we're going to bind everything together at the bottom and play the main game. So here is the code for the main game loop. Okay, so we're going to move the ball. We're going to check the border. Okay, the paddle and the ball collision we're going to set up here. We're going to change the ball's velocity randomly using this line here. Okay, and then if the ball misses a paddle, we're going to call a game over. It's going to write using the pen, write game over, and it's going to break and the game will stop. Okay, so this is the main game loop. So let's have a look at this. Let's break it down. Game loop, set a hit counter to zero, which sort of relates to the score. While true, we update the screen manually. Okay, and then we're going to move the ball. Step two, we're going to move the ball. So, ball.set x, using the coordinate tool here, update the ball's x coordinate by adding its velocity. Okay, and then update the ball's y coordinate by adding its y velocity into this here. Step three, the border. This is an important bit because we've got different borders. So there's a border at 290 in the x-axis. Yeah. So going down this border here, this left, this right-hand side. Then we've got a border on this left-hand side. Yeah. And then we've got a border at the top. So border one, border two, and border three. No border at the bottom. Okay. No border at the bottom. So here we go, paddle and ball collision. If the ball and the y-coordinate gets past is greater than minus 170, right down at the bottom, and the paddle's x-coordinate minus 50. So let's have a look. If the ball is at the same level as the paddle, within the paddle's width, set the ball's y-coordinate to just above the paddle. Reverse the ball's y-velocity to bounce it back up. So this will bounce the ball back up. If it is the paddle, it will bounce the ball back up. Yeah. And again, a random choice as to how fast and which direction the ball is going to go in. And in terms of scoring, we increase the score by one. But, and this is what I was talking about before, this is where we can increase. So every three hits, every time we hit the ball three times, yeah, every three hits, it's going to increase the ball's velocity by 50%. Okay, as you can see here. So it's going to speed up, it's going to double in speed and get faster and faster and faster. Again, what I've just mentioned, we increase the score by one. Clear the pen, okay, but pen.write score up at the top here, and we're going to add to the score. Yeah, write the new score on the screen. Step five, if the ball misses the paddle down here, if it goes down this side and it passes the paddle, so if the ball drops to less than minus 300, basically the edge of the border, if the ball goes below the paddle or off the screen, then pen go to zero, zero, pen in the middle, and it's going to write the word game over, yeah, right in the middle of the screen. Okay, it's going to write the word game over right in the middle of the screen here. Okay, break, and that's going to exit the loop and end the game. Okay, just put a break in there. So if the ball travels past the paddle and off the screen, then the game is over. Okay, and it writes the word game over. And then finally, to start all this, to get all this running, we've got the screen listening. The screen is listening for the spacebar to be pressed. The game loads and it's waiting for the spacebar to be pressed. Once the spacebar has been pressed, yeah, then it starts the main screen loop. It starts the main game. Okay, and that is it. So just to recap, okay, I've now come down to line 135. If I run this, run module, the game loads. We press spacebar to start. We use the left and right cursors. I'll speed this up a little bit. Left and right cursors to play the game. Keep batting the ball backwards and forwards. But, and remember after, after we score three, if we did back again, it should, as you should be able to see this, it should speed up the ball. So it's twice the speed now. But then if we sort of fail to hit it back, the words game over appears in the middle of the screen. And that's the end of it. So that is how we can create a nice and easy retro style Pong game. Hope you've enjoyed that. Have a go. 
Let me know in the comments below if you've got any problems, any issues, and I will try my best to sort them out. So thank you very much indeed for watching, and I will see you next time. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.